with a walking stick. This is walking stick self-defense. Walking sticks are anything that you want them to be. It's any kind of stick that's about as long as this right here. This is the Japanese Joe, it's 54 inches, but it depends on your height, how tall are you. If you bend your elbow and you have your hand on the top portion of the stick, you should have a little bit of the stick that sticks out of the thumb side. That's with your elbow bent and it's 90 degrees. That's the optimal size for a walking stick. Now, the diameter is up to you too. This is a one inch Hickory Joe. This is a self-defense walking stick made. It's the first link below. This is made specifically for self-defense. In this position, you can thrust right into the face. So you wanna have a little bit sticking here so that you can immediately address, respond to the threat. This is the threat, how to use a walking stick for self-defense. You simply turn your shoulders, turn your hips, extend the arm and stick it right through his face for self-defense. That's the first move. The second move in the same position, this is a walking stick self-defense. Your elbow's bent at 90 degrees. You're walking down the street, minding your own business. The threat presents itself. You have to respond immediately. You turn your shoulder, turn your hips, and turn your hand over as you extend. The first one was simply extending like a punch. The second one is extending and turning. So from here, you turn, that comes up into his face, into his neck or his shoulder, and it's gonna hit extremely hard no matter what your walking stick is made out of. Now, of course, if it's hickory like this, this is the quantum self-defense walking stick. It's that first link below. It's gonna hit a lot harder if it's made out of hickory because it's just a denser hard wood. But from this position, you thrust. The second one is you turn. The third one is you're gonna lift it into the front hand and thrust. Very simple, it's very fast, it's very explosive. I wanted to show you self-defense techniques using your walking stick, using the Japanese Joe that you can immediately employ that you don't need a lot of training for. Number one, thrust. Number two, turn the hand over and allow that back side to come forward. Number three, lift the back hand. Next to, this is the right hand, right ear. Same side of the body, lift it. This is also a nice blocking or deflecting motion. I'm going to stick this between me and you, if you're the threat. I stick this between the two of us, and now I can simply thrust going straight in. And if you miss him like I just did, hit him again. From here, I want you to slide your hand forward and bring the back hand down over the top. So watch what that looks like. I'm going to hit the slow motion button on the camera. Notice that I'm leaning forward to get more power in my strike. Watch this one. I'm pushing against the stick as I bring it forward. I hit the fast forward there at the end. From here, now always finish with your hands apart on these strikes. If you bring your hand together and you miss, you create a pivot point. Now your stick is in the dirt, your tip's in the dirt. He closes the distance, you're in trouble. If your hands stay apart, you'll finish here. And if you miss them, the stick's still between you and the threat. So remember, your hands come together, you create a pivot point. So all the strikes we finish with at least one fist between them, usually just a little bit more. So from here, for review, this is a fast, quick, down and dirty. Once you know how to defend yourself with your Joe martial arts staff, that's the medium sized staff. Typically it's 54 inches, but it depends on you. How tall are you? Where does your armpit start? That's my armpit. It comes up right about 54 inches. From there, bend my elbow 90 degrees. This is the perfect walking stick. I have all this stick right here to stick in his face or his throat or into his solar plexus or down into the groin. That's the first technique. Second technique, turn your shoulders and hip. Third technique, lift and thrust. Fourth technique from there, bring it over the top and you can strike straight down on top. You can strike coming from the side, alongside the side of their face. That also works. From here, I want you to now practice some spins because the spins help you to get better at the strikes. In the right hand, I'm gonna turn it over for that strike. Then I'm gonna bring it back, over and back, over and back. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And let me show you something. This, then this is specific to the Joe, the Joe Martial Arts staff. 
you're spinning, holding the shorter side and spinning the longer side in front of your body. Keep it really tight, by the way. But here's what I want to show you. If I move my hand to the middle, it's just a figure eight staff that you already know how to do. Figure eight spin with your bow staff or your bow, the longer martial arts staff. But here with the side staff, because it is a technique that you're gonna use later, you hit him, knock him out, right, for self-defense. You practice that longer spin. After you do this for 30 seconds, you need time under tension. 30 seconds will make your body change. Put your other hand simply over top of this hand, get this one out of the way, and turn. And if you like training with the martial arts staff or a walking stick for self-defense, just like the idea of self-defense, give me a thumbs up, please. Turn your shoulders, turn your hips, stomach up and in, abs tight. Do this for 30 seconds. Bring it back into the right hand, the first hand. Do your spin again, and I want to show you how to change your hand position so that now you can use it like the Japanese sword, the boken or the katana, or the, the uh, shinai if you use the bamboo sword. So that you have the hand in this position where the length, the longest part comes out of your thumb, where before we started, the longest side is coming out of your pinky. So watch my hand, I'm gonna to try to get close up in the camera, do the slow motion again. And I know it's not really slow motion. It's a little dorky thing I do. So when I come here and I'm pointing this to the sky, I'm, from, I'm here, I'm gonna take these three fingers and pull it behind. And by the way, hello everybody, thank you for being here. I'm sorry I haven't responded to your, your comments. I have um, a short period of time, but I just wanted to uh, say hello. I wanted to show you some stuff. Thanks Angel, I appreciate that. So you're turning, this comes up. These three fingers pull behind while it's facing up. And then as it goes down and completes the turn, from here, Good, so you're just holding a chopstick. Use a chopstick, that's perfect. Bring it down, and then when it's here, see how those three fingers come back on? Now it's the first finger that has to pull back and get in this position, and now you're in your Japanese sword position, right? And if you know anything about the Japanese sword, you always roll your wrists toward each other. See how that pulls my elbows out? If your hands are like this, he's gonna, the samurai, he's gonna slice your wrists right off. Right? So you always get your hands here. This is also a stronger strike, a stronger position. So from here to here. Now from this position, you can, you can now spin, right? So we're gonna do this spin for 30 seconds and I'll show you how to get it back. From here, as it goes down, same thing as before, the last three fingers pull out as it's facing down. So that's the opposite. When I was in this grip, when I'm facing up, I pull those three fingers, and then when I want to go back, when I'm down, I'm face, uh, those three fingers pull back, and the length is down. Now from here, I allow the momentum to continue to do the spin. It turns around, my thumb comes out, the fingers come in, the first finger is the last one that has to go back, now I'm in the same position. So that whole thing, I'm turning, change my hand position, spinning, and then if you want, you can start to go to the front and the back of your body like you're some uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, and then you put it behind the back and you whip it out, and this is called the Obi-Ani spin. Don't hit yourself though, not with a hickory one. It would hurt less with a fake lightsaber than if you hit yourself with this. That, it, anyway, that's the OBA. If you want to learn how to do that, I teach that too. Look up my last name and lightsaber. You want to see a, fun, a lot of uh, fun lightsaber videos, how to use a single lightsaber, double lightsaber, two-bladed lightsaber. I used to, when, we, when I was in Ohio, yeah, the Obiani. When I was in Ohio, we had a lightsaber academy. We didn't call it that because back then, George Lucas was shutting people down with the lawsuits. How dare you call it a lightsaber academy? We didn't call it a Jedi we didn't call it a Star Wars, we didn't call it anything. We called it, call it a stunt or a light sword stunt saber. Trying to avoid 
the mega pockets. Now Disney owns them. I'm sure they sue everybody. Anyway, it's it's more fun when you when you can teach stuff and you don't have to make up names just to be able to teach it. But learn how to do this technique. This is from the Japanese Joe. This is a Joe spinning technique that'll give you great manual or dexterity, flexibility, strength, speed, power in your hands, your grips. And if you like working with the Joe, you like working with uh, the self-defense staff, give me a thumbs up. All right, I wanted you to see a couple of those spins, but I also wanna give you a familiarization exercise or a, um, an agility exercise that's gonna make you better. Neither of one of those were the right term. What am I looking for? An exercise that's gonna make you better at handling your Joe staff. So from here, your hands start on the ends. This also works really well if you like to use the Hanbo, the Japanese Hanbo, which is also a walking stick, but it's 36 inches. You wanna use a Hanbo or the Joe. This is a great drill. Basically what you're doing is one hand's coming on top. This is the left hand coming on top. My right hand's gonna come on bottom. When they meet in the middle, I turn it so the other hand is on top. I slide it back out, slide it out so that I can practice finding the balance point without ever taking my hands off the staff. I wanna go in one direction for 30 seconds and then go in the other direction for 30 seconds and I've been a lot smoother than this, so this is something I could benefit from practice. You could benefit from practice if you do this with me. That's the first one. The second one is I want you to start in this position, just the sword in front, or the, the sword. The, your Joe, your walking stick in front of you, and you're gonna lift, <coughs> excuse me, the back hand straight up. Something in my throat today. And my hand's gonna come to the top. Almost like I'm palming the top of the Joe. The bottom hand comes to the bottom, just like we started when we were doing this. But I'm doing it here now. From here, I can stick it in your face. I can smash you here. I can do a, a circular blocking motion. There are a lot of things that you're gonna learn how to do with your Joe martial arts staff from here. But what I want you to do is lift this up and practice a downward strike right on top of his head to knock him out for self-defense. Then I'm gonna slide this back, lift this hand up, bring it forward, and bring it forward just over and over. And your goal is to get this walking stick, Joe Martial Arts Staff, in the center line of your body and get the hand that's going up to the sky to be as tight into your body as you possibly can. Just bringing it up, get used to the length. If you're using the Hanbo, you can do this also. If you're using the Joe, but you will not be able to do this with the bow unless you have wickedly long arms. You have some freakishly long arms that maybe you could, but a 72 inch staff, it's not as likely. But the Joe is the perfect length for this. After this, then you're gonna bring it back and you're gonna push with your palm facing the sky, your fingers facing down, your thumb facing down, push it forward. Now this is a blocking motion and I'm cutting it a little bit because this guy's not as tall as he needs to be for me to show it the way I wanna show it my hand here and I turn it here. This hand is just turning like this. That's the hand that's on the tip that's farthest away from me. It'll be your right or left. It'll change all the time depending on which hand you put forward. But this left hand is forward. Let me make sure my guest is, is on his way. My right hand slides back. This is my left hand is in the front. And then I'm going to push it and I'm gonna create a spiraling motion. That's how you keep from breaking the wood of your Joe martial arts staff. Good afternoon, Wilson. It's nice to see you. So my hand's here and I'm going to bring it forward and then I slide it back behind the other hand. Same thing. And I bring it forward. I'm just going to go one, two. And right now my feet are just squared under my body. Later, I want you to step back, bring that foot forward. As you bring that blocking motion in, Bring your body forward because it's the body that's going to do all of the work. And you can put that together with this. So you can block, strike. Now you've got a two uh, move combination, a block, strike combination. From here, you bring it forward. You can just come up, straight down and strike. You can come forward and strike here. Or you can come forward, bring it back, and strike. Got what I was doing there for a second. From here, 
forward, bring it back, up, and strike. One of my favorite ways to practice with the Joe is in a four direction practice, right? So let's say I stand behind it. Oh, we haven't talked about this yet. We're gonna call him the thread again. This is how to use your walking stick for self-defense, how to defend yourself with a walking stick or uh, Japanese Joe. I suggest, this is what I do, I hike with my Japanese Joe. You can hike with a Japanese Joe if you want. It's just, you know, you train with it, why not hike with it? Looks like a walking stick. What does anybody else know? And who cares what they think? I point my thumb, that pops it into the backhand, and then I thrust, almost like a pull cue. Thrust here. So from here, point your thumb and thrust. Then, see how I did that? The hands come next to each other. Now it's in this hand, this foot's forward, point the thumb, thrust, come forward, put in the other hand, thrust, switch feet, thrust, switch feet, thrust, switch feet, thrust, that's the simple way, then do thrust, switch feet, thrust, switch feet, remember this motion, this is kind of like where we come, put the hands on the side, I need a wider camera, the hands on the side, and I practice the thrust, then I simply switch, thrust, keep it back, thrust, and that coming forward motion is going to be very powerful. The more you practice this, and practice it in the air, you don't have to practice this hitting anything, but if you practice it in the air over and over and all the way, over again, you're going to get really good. Angel asks, where is the school? I am in West Palm Beach, or Palm Beach County, Florida, which is above Miami by two counties. It's above Fort Lauderdale. Um, specific, more specifically, Palm Beach Gardens, which is just below Jupiter. Some famous people that live in, in Jupiter. You've got uh, Tiger Woods, the golfer Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player. From here, from here, Jack Nicholas. You got a lot of golfers down here, right? Rory McElroy is up there somewhere. All right, so from here, you point and thrust. Practice that, and then if you want, bring it back, come up and smash over the top of the head. Thrust on the other side, come up, smash, thrust, come up. If you lose it, grab it, thrust. That's the whole pur purpose of practice. If, if you are super smooth and it's all perfect for you, you don't ever foible or foible or make any mistakes, then what's the point of practice? I practice because I'm not as good as I need to be. And then strike, thrust, and strike, thrust, and strike, thrust, block, thrust, strike. Start to build your combinations Get them better and better and better. Yeah, Garen says a hiker staff. So a hiker pole, hiker staff, you can do this with any telemarking pole, anything like that. Um, Wing Chen Wood Dummy. Yeah, Andrew asks if I get the, the, the Mook Chang. That's the word I couldn't think of the other day. The Mook Chang, the wooden dummy from um, Wing Chun. Can I make a video? I would love to. Yes, I will I'll make you a video on how to spend hours smashing your arms and your legs against the mook jong the wooden dummy because it's fun it's fun all right it's almost the same it's it's, uh, it's similar it's different but it's similar to for in my mind to doing a speed bag practicing a speed bag or smashing a, a makiwara the japanese punching yeah matthew says practice brings familiarity all right so that's what i've got i've got one more technique that i want you to think about this is very non-traditional but this is so effective for self-defense because we're talking about how to defend yourself with a walking stick. Not necessarily how to learn how to master the Joe. I don't teach how to master the Joe. I'm teaching you how to defend yourself with a walking stick. And that is, get it in the other hand. To get it in the other hand, either do this or you can do this. I'm going to have you do this. Turn your palm up. From here, step and smash him right through his teeth for self-defense. So you're standing here. He's coming closer, he's coming so fast, you don't know what else to do. You see that his spit coming out of his mouth, he's trying to hurt you, he's got something in his hand. Right before he gets to you, put this in your other hand and then, just like if you had a rifle and you ran out of the stuff that goes in the rifle, the bullets, poo, 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 and you broke your bayonet off, all you have left is the empty rifle, you still have a, a perfectly valuable weapon because the weapon's really here, right? And you say to yourself, this guy's crossing the line, he's gonna get me, and that's the end of me, no uh, future generations, I'm done. 
So before he gets to me, I'm going to stick that right through his face and that big hard piece of whatever it is, in this case hickory, going right through his teeth, through his nose, through his eyes, and through his throat for self-defense. Yeah, mouth, teeth, nose, under the chin. Blast him like the like Garen's saying. You bring it here, boom. And that is such a powerful strike, you won't even believe it. And just practice it. If you don't have something to hit, practice it in the air. Think about what the basic rules are. Full extension and move your body in. You would also have rotation of the shoulders and hips, but in this case, it's not appropriate because you're going straight in. From here, straight in. From here, straight in. Then you can rotate the shoulders and hips if you want. And do all the other techniques. But if you can't think of anything else to do and you need to defend yourself with your walking stick, put it in the other hand and thrust straight forward. Stop his forward advance. That gives you time to think. And you think, oh, maybe I'll go to the head, go to the head, and go into the groin, and come over the top and lift him up. The other for self-defense. The other stuff will occur to you because you've stopped his forward advance. So you can't think of anything else. And I want you to practice this. Imagine, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, boom. Here he comes, boom. Here he comes, boom. You just do that over and over again until your arms are sore and your shoulders are sore and then you start to ache because you feel the blood getting in there as you get stronger. And you will get stronger. You guys have been awesome. I will see you on the next one.